Okay, today's episode, Kirsten and I are the only ones who have seen it, I think. And we just really enjoyed it because it starts out with a sincerity of the heart to get married. But unlike our community where there's all this support, support and joining and opportunity to work through grievances and unhealed issues before they actually get to the altar, so to speak, this wedding ceremony is actually used to flush up, kind of like in the early days of, I think we had friends about 10 years ago that just them getting married, the parents didn't like it, and others just flushed up all this stuff. In here, all of their grievances come up because of their commitment, and they can't really make the full commitment until some of these deeper abandonment issues are faced. And it's really funny because those of you who've seen Touched by an Angel, there's angels, Monica, Tess, and... Um, Andrew, and Monica is still an angel in training, so she's got this pure heart and beautiful words, but instead of just wearing her role lightly, she takes her role very seriously every time. And so in this episode, she's a wedding planner, and actually becomes a wedding planner, and forgets she's an angel, <laughs> here to shine the love of God. So she's getting prompted throughout the episode. Didn't you forget something? Didn't you forget something? And she's like, what did I forget? I've got the cake. I've got the... So it gets revealed what, what it is she forgets in the end. So. I think you covered it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just very clear as it goes through. It's like you, you can't say yes to God. You can't say yes to love. So you can't really even get married to a person while there's this deep hurt and uh, belief that you've been abandoned by love or betrayed by love underneath, it would be just over the top. And so the bride, she actually can't even make herself go through with it. Something in her knows that there is a deeper call for healing that she has. And so the wedding day is like, it just brings it all to a head of everything that needs to be seen and faced, just gets pushed up to the surface and it's so beautiful to see that just like for us there's a whole team of angels there mm. to support them to mm. go into the deeper healing together it's not about a wedding mm. no and then half the group there are like the family members saying let's get on with the ceremony let's we're here for a wedding and the ones who are aware that no this is about awakening this is about relationship with god are saying it's not about a wedding there's something much deeper going mm. on. So it's very mm. clear. It's, it's a very clear purpose episode. And even the angels who are miracle workers, they don't know everything. Just like you're only given what you need to know because it's for healing. You can't just step ahead and orchestrate the what you think is supposed to happen. They say things moment by moment because those that need the healing have to speak and mm go through it too. So. Allow it. That's the thing. The healing has to be allowed. So even though it's a wedding, you know, and on the surface of things you would want everything to go according to plan, God's plan is healing. God's plan is awakening. It's allowing the healing to come up. And so it doesn't go according to plan always. It doesn't look tidy. So it's. I love that they just give full permission and allowance for what it's really for. Well, that was a good little synopsis for all of life. You have an event, which this world has lots of events, but then suddenly throughout the event it, we heard the words, you need to forgive. So that was an important first step Right there, because there were grievances. Grievances starting to fly. Grievances coming up. And then there was a sense of, uh, of an unwillingness to forgive. And there was a fear underneath that. And part of the fear was not knowing how to forgive. Like, like it was daunting, like an overwhelming wall. So even though the words were coming in there from Monica, you need to forgive, 
and even saying sometimes it's for yourself, it's not for another person. So the incentive should be there, but there still was this fear about how. And it seems like as the as it went on more and more, the wedding was stopped and all the emotions came up and and all kinds of other things started to swirl. There was something that was forgotten that had to be included, a forgotten letter, a forgot, forgotten invitation to invite God in, which is really the awareness that you can't personally do it. You need help to forgive. You need God or the Holy Spirit to forgive. And then it seemed to just spin in a way where they, it was out of their control, out of their hands, as it must be always, and a recognition that it's out of our hands. And then finally, a very strong commitment, like it, they were both spoken through, like the Holy Spirit, the presence of God was invited in, and they spoke through the commitment that didn't have anything to do with time, didn't have anything to do with who was diagnosed with leukemia, gripping up of the letter, but it's finally that commitment. And it's, it's interesting that it cannot be difficult to do the task that Christ would have you do, because it is He who does it. It's Christ, it's the Lord, it's the strength of the Lord that is the how. There is no earthly how. There is, it's not a personal responsibility, it's not something you have to figure out. All you have to do is open your heart to it. It's a very short prayer. Here I am, Lord. It's a prayer of openness, saying, here I am. I'm here to serve, I'm here to help, I'm here to heal. That's my only purpose, that's my only function. And that's an, that's an honest prayer, there's no pride in that prayer. When you say, here I am, Lord, and you mean it, you feel so peaceful. You st suddenly are open and in alignment with love. You could see it on their faces at the end. The, the sincerity, the devotion, you know, it kind of just burst through both of them simultaneously when they were in a place of, here I am, Lord. It's, it's amazing to think that all we have to do throughout the day is just to hold that prayer in our heart. Like to step aside from all the busy running around and in this case it was all the wedding planning and the flowers and the cake and the relatives and the parking and the logistics just go on and on and on and on. And this is a world of temptation and distractions if you want it to be. But you can bring an end to those distractions and temptation with one prayer. Here I am, Lord. The power of one prayer makes all distractions go silent. Makes all temptations silent. Because what do we know about the Lord? The Lord cannot be tempted. The Lord has overcome temptation. The Lord has showed the strength that's available to us in our lives, in our hearts, by His demonstration. And now, you know, it's up to us to say yes to that demonstration, to say yes to that prayer. Some of you remember the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us. It, we have been delivered, but we have to accept it for ourselves. We have to have that prayer right on our heart. Here I am, Lord. 
to stay in that prayer. That's how we truly live. That's how we feel the, the joy and the love and the peace and the passion is through that, that prayer. And it's been said that prayers are answered. It's more a question of be careful what you pray for. Is really, you know, we have we were created by God, so we are powerful beyond measure to be created by God. So it's like be careful what you pray for, because prayers are answered. When you pray the prayer, "Here I am, Lord," you're just giving your full focus and attention to really what you're here for, and that's why you receive the blessing of it immediately. And you pray that prayer. And if you've noticed your mind got pulled off onto some meaningless idol, some temporary nothing, that she'll surely pass away. It's here today and gone tomorrow. You know, you can say, whoa, whoa wait a minute. There's this, there's a prayer that I want to offer. Here I am, Lord, right now. And that brings the peace right back. And it's great, this is, it's great that we have a beautiful marriage ceremony and then we have this. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I think that marriage is, and relationships are, it's a very important topic. It can get you right down to the core of things in a hurry. Just like when Christmas time rolls around. You know, it's a symbol of the birth of Jesus, and you know, there's so many suicides, there's, there's so much intensity, there's so many counseling calls, there's so many reports of stress in families, maybe families that haven't even been together. The, gr the grievances have been simmering, and then they come together over the holidays. They even make movies of that. They, they make millions of dollars. All they do is they bring a family together <laughs> over the holidays and they get some good actors and actresses. And, do we have a good script? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's going to be a hit. <laughs> because, because even watching those movies triggers, starts to bring up those, those emotions. There's some pretty intense emotions around relationships. In this case, a, a father that was distant and that she had no contact with. But, you know, there's a lot of intensity there. And I think we should be grateful for these opportunities when those, that intensity comes up, because that's really our opportunity to heal. You know, we can kind of push it out of awareness, but when it finally comes into awareness, then that's what this whole episode was about, that it couldn't be pushed away. You couldn't, they couldn't just go through the motions and, you know, oh, let's get it over with and, you know, it's not about the event. It, sh it truly showed us it wasn't about the event of a marriage. They even said it's not, it's not about uh, that ceremony, marriage ceremony, it's about the marriage, the staying with what's in your heart, what's important, that's what is the focus, it's the focal point. So we have a roving mic here, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Tech support right there. James has got it ready. And if you have, if you watched this episode or, or even had emotions during the ceremony earlier, if you, if things started to come up, then this, this is the day for, for the healing. This is the day for the healing with those intense emotions. James has got if anybody has anything.
Yeah, I, I didn't have like intense emotions, but the, I think that when I uh, had to, I had to laugh. That's an emotion. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, when, when she, um, when he explained to his parents that she, when he um, did the vows, it was as if uh, he was reading a phone book. And yeah, I got, I, I, yeah, I, how do you say that? Um, but like, yeah, I've been like that too. I just get numb and like, but then not knowing I had this in this relationship with Dennis and Dennis was like, it's like you don't, you don't care. And I think I, I don't care. Why, why do I, don't I feel anything? And now this movie shows me that yeah, I didn't trust. I didn't trust him. Yeah. And before we, um, yeah, and it goes deeper because I saw I was in a relationship with Dennis, but oftentimes I just acted out as if he was my father, like. And. I was like, how can I have a relationship like as if he is my father? And just before coming here, I had this conversation with Gina. And um, yeah, about our. <laughs> yeah, being my father. father. Yeah, and then it came about, about my, it was about my father. As well, like last night, I dreamt that um, my father was really angry. Like he, he had hit me a couple of times when I was younger. Yeah, but yeah, and I think that I, um, I felt like a bad girl and trying to be a good girl, but I, I don't love, don't love myself. And we all came. I dreamt that I. Um, yeah, that my father was really aggressive in my, yeah, in my dream. He was really, really aggressive. And then it turns out that he, um, I was looking at him and he looked so confused after a while. I have this fear of aggression. So I, I, pre I, I, I press my, how do you say that? Um, I don't want to feel my anger as well. Yeah, you talked about that the other day, <laughs> how you pushed down the anger. Yeah, I'm afraid of it. Yeah, yeah I pushed down the anger. But in my dream, yeah, my father was really aggressive, and then as I, looked at, I looked at him, he, he looked as if he was confused. And this morning I thought, like, okay, I don't have to fix anything. I'll just give it over to the Holy Spirit. So, yeah, when I could feel here... Um, while you were talking and doing the movie. I feel like, oh yeah, it's about trusting God. Like, I don't trust, I want to, but I have this fear. And this movie showed me again, like, my father did it maybe a couple of times, but I didn't, I don't trust him. Like, I want to, I love him, but at the same time, I don't trust men. And now I could see like, oh yeah, it's for me to trust yeah, to trust God, like, give myself to Him. I can really feel like, yes, I'm ready. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm going to move on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I made that vow to my... Oh, yeah. that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's yeah. precious. Yeah. You took your vow today too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's interesting that we were talking in there exactly about fathers, and my father was very uh, physically abusive, and I left home at 15, so um, I never went back home. So. I was telling her that eventually 
the, the, that God moved on my heart to forgive him for who he is. He said, I want you to forgive your father for who he is. You were placed in that home for a reason because of who you are becoming. And um, that was a weird, kind of a weird uh, thing for me to be able to do. But when I was finally able to do that, it showed me that um, I don't have to be a part of his anger and things like that anymore. Uh, I don't have to be ruled by that anymore. And then in, in a lot of a lot of women, we as women, we we want that male role in our in our lives, so we end up marrying the same type, sort of, and then you know ends up bad. One after the other sometimes and ends up in bad relationships and we're really just wanting our father to love us. And so then when we look at God and he's it's called he's called a him <laughs> it's very hard for women who've been abused by their father to embrace God because it, we see him as him as well. So um I just think it's precious that she was able to do that today and that all tied in together and in with marriage as well. So. Yeah, it's beautiful. It, it is that we have these concepts and memories in mind and, and they're the past. So we're trying to relate as we move through life, but we still have those memories from the past. and. And we're, it takes a lot of devotion to open up to a spirit that's neither male nor female, that's, that's, that's pure I amness, that's our destiny, that's our true will. And, and Jesus used, when he prayed, he would talk about Abba, Father, but, but now we know that, that God isn't male or female or masculine or feminine, it's just love. And we have to w rinse our mind of all these concepts and attractions where we seem to replace the, the thing like you mentioned, partner after partner, or Groundhog Day, just reliving mm. the same day over and over, stepping in the same puddles, you know, falling for the same traps. It can be frustrating when you're aware of it, when you start to see the repetition of it, and you don't know how to stop it. But that's what this was really about too, the power of prayer, the power of staying open to that guidance moment by moment is quite an adventure. And so, I really think that the vows that were shared, that Nicola and Yuda shared, is not really different from the vow that you shared. It's the same vow. You, you all have the same smile on your faces, like you've just made a very important vow, one that will carry you in a, in a new way, in a brand new way, and keep things brand new, always ever fresh and innocent and new, not rehashing the past. Because that's no life, to rehash the past, or to search for someone to fill a perceived lack, and have the same disappointment come over and over. That's very sad and frustrating, and it's not really God's will for us to, to go that way. Uh, for me, a wedding has always symbolized the end of separation, the return to heaven. Um, symbolically speaking, what was separate is now joining in one. And I've always thought it was it was very, you know, very very beautiful. And uh, you know, I when I think about the way so many marriages go today. The statistics are not kind. They're not kind. 
And, uh, you know, what I witnessed out there today, just the, the authentic, you know, genuineness that you, you can't fake. I mean, just, just the, the love and the joy that I witnessed. It's, I could say it's inspiring, but that doesn't describe it. I really can't put words to it. And I just want to say that, you know, what I've seen, I'm so happy to be a witness to. And my my prayer is that you, you stay together forever. <laughs> That's, I just want to wish you the best. so upset. I don't really know why I was so upset, but um, it seemed so sad to me that the mother manipulated the letters like that. And it was just crushing for me that she didn't get to be where the father wasn't in her life like that. I'm not really sure why that tore me up so much. It just seemed really sad, like something had, was lost. Like there was, a, I, I think I had that belief in loss that um, showed up there as if it could be that. Yeah, was, we can talk about that. Mm -hmm. it, it would be sad and it would be hurtful if if manipulation had a re had a reality to it. Mm. In other words, I think when I think of manipulation, I think of control. And really, this whole episode uh, was was a total let go of control. You know, the angels had to let go of control. Mm -hmm. It it kept going that way. Even uh, the angel of death, who was doing the filming, Tess was saying, "Get out of my face!" You know. She didn't like that there. Monica was trying to do her job, but then she said, you're ruining my wedding when <laughs> you invited the father, because from the perception, this was like a father that had not been there, and now you're ruining... Who invited him? I was just doing what I was said to do, you know. So it's the spirit is behind all the symbols of the world and brings in all the ingredients brings in everything we need just to find that forgiveness, mm -hmm. just to find that innocence. Mm -hmm. And then the hurt can come in is when you start to look at it from like a time perspective, like, oh, she was robbed of years and years and years, robbed yeah. of a loving yeah. relationship with her father because someone else hid something, or manipulated something, or controlled something. But if we actually go into that manipulation more and more, you can see there's feelings of betrayal that come in. There's rage under this belief in manipulation and control, as if one could control another, or one could prevent love. And God is really teaching us that we have to lift that up, we have to get past this idea of victimization, because there's always hurt and always pain with victimization. Mm -hmm. And in the Bible it says, you know, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. We're back to, here I am Lord. Yeah. As soon as they open up, as soon as they open up to God, they invite God in at the end, as soon as they open up and start to feel that love activate in their hearts, then, then it clears. And, and so that's great that you can observe that. That's what we want you to do when we show an episode, just to watch. You could feel it in yourself, you know, this hurt. And, and then as you go through that healing, then it opens up your whole life anew. It gives you new opportunities. 
to to love and to extend love, to be an agent of God, you know, on earth extending, mm -hmm. it's, which is really what you want, that's what you're praying for. Yeah. But I'm glad that you were able to like, get in touch with that, because it would be sad if manipulation was was the fact of it. We just have to really lift that up. And then I wanted the father to get to walk right down the aisle. I had a huge attachment to that. <laughs> <laughs> to that outcome. <laughs> yeah. But the mother kid she like did that to her the whole life and uh, is that revenge or something? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Well, you know, that's the fun part of watching a movie together, or an episode, is because if you go around with the mic, you know, people would say, I wanted this to happen, I wanted that to happen. And really, Christ is saying to us, if you really look at your own mind, it's pretty wacky, because there's a lot of different outcomes that may you may even be thinking of that conflict with each other. Which you think, I think, well, no, actually, I kind of, no, you know, it's like we're not sure actually what outcome we actually want. If we're honest, we start to see that it's pretty wacky in there. And then that's why we need the healing. You know, that's why we're here. That's why we have relationships. That's why we make commitments. A relationship is a commitment. A diet is a commitment. A yoga practice is a commitment. Going to, job, to a job and working and showing up on time, and whatever days or hours you're supposed to work, is a commitment. We're given these little mini assignments and commitments by God to strengthen our own integrity, our own alignment with Spirit. And so it's important to not push those assignments away. And that could be part of what Levy talked about, like when, you know, when Dennis was there, there was an assignment. But at least you can notice that you were kind of afraid of something and numbed out, and now you're getting tired. Oh, maybe it had a lot to do with my relationship with my biological father, which is still in memory. It's not like he's physically even present, but in thought, in memory, he was there. And then that gets put on to Dennis, and then there's a numb kind of feeling, and then it can be reflected back, like, don't you care? I love you so much, don't you care? No, it's, it's, that's how it goes. And it gives us a great opportunity to heal, to truly crack open and live in love. So it's, it's beautiful. It's, I just have such a gratitude for the opportunities. We get so many, so many opportunities. Thank you. Welcome. Is it on? <clears throat> if I can use marriage <clears throat> as a symbol of a relationship, that's what I got out of that movie for me. The focus on finding forgiveness, finding a relationship with God uh, through a relationship with the other, whether it's husband and wife or my parents. You know, from being here for a week so far, and all these relationships are coming up. And they're all becoming real mirrors uh, for me personally. And um, I think you mentioned it in the film, touched on it at the end, but they, it wasn't really the focus of the film. But it was very important to see that the, 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 the groom said to the wife, to the uh, to the um, bride. Um, <clears throat> this is about you. This isn't about your mother or your father or siblings or whatever you had. You felt like you needed to forgive them, but it seems like it's on the planet. It's becoming more and more a focus that I need to do forgiveness. I need to forgive. It's a personal responsibility, and it's becoming more clear in my life as a and um, the focus on my, my spiritual life now is on 
becoming more conscious of my own decision to hold grievances or grudges or sins against the other and then finding it within myself and and this is really helping me to see that it's no more a focus on you know who did something to me but more about me and god and that's where i'm finding it so helpful and the world is kind of disappearing and it's more about and then of course i'm feeling like i'm disappearing too. <laughs> very really you know uh, so um, and you're all helping me to stay focused on that because can stay focused <laughs> you know like, no it's not over there oh, I think I see it over there it's like it's really coming around back it always comes back to me and I see that you got a lot and, of helpers here huh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah and, everywhere you turn and like and then I, then I then I'll go back and get some clarity by talking to the person the last thing I want to do and and then I'll say, well, is, is this what you meant? And come up, all of a sudden, find out that's not really what they meant. Mm -hmm. That was my projection or perception. Um, so th this is so powerful. I can't tell you. I, I can't even figure out how. I haven't figured this out in the last 15 years since I first met you, David. And, and others, um, but it took me to get away from my world back east to really and get away from my job, family, friends, selling my house, you know, almost getting rid of everything to, you know, stuff, things that I identified myself with to get back to my relationship with, with God. And now I can have fun rather than holding grudges with everyone I meet, you know. I don't know if I really have a question, but that, of course, the question, that part, I was like, what is that question? And all I could think of was the answers in the question and uh, inviting God in for everything. This was a real burden for the last, first three days here. It was like, because it kept on, it seemed like it was like, oh, I don't, and I remember doing this, you know, many years with this idea where I was like, I don't know, you know, you called it metaphysical ghosting, I think. I heard it brought up, and that really helped me, because I've been doing that. And staying focused on, um, on the relationship, what's really going on, and dealing with it. Not stuffing it down, but really dealing with it. And so many here have helped me to stay focused on it. So that's, it's, a, it's like a training, because it's, it's easy to like just think you're doing it right. And you can't you can't do this alone. I'm, I am convinced. I'm sold on that. There's one experience I'm learning here, is that I'm, very few can. I think you got somewhere with it. I don't I don't know about your personal, actual. Uh, you somehow were able to throw yourself out there, uh, in a way that's been very uh, learning for me. But I don't think most humans are able to do that. If that's what you did, I don't know, but <laughs> maybe, maybe you had companions there that, that you just were angels. An angels? Oh, that's, that was great. I was like, how, an angel can make a mistake? You know, she's like, what is it I'm supposed to be doing here? She's like, I'm just trying to make a wedding happening. Happen. Everyone's been keeping us all focused, and it's, it's such vigilance it takes to stay focused on it. We're not just here about putting these banners up and and um, the wedding cake. I loved when I saw the wedding cake. The focus, obviously, for them was not on the externals. You know? <laughs> Even the flowers, I thought maybe you picked them out of the ground or something. You know? <laughs> but it was still beautiful. <laughs> you know, but it was like, don't get sidetracked by the, the, by all the, by the form, the, the, ma the wedding ceremony and all that. And I've seen that so many times from my background and experiences. Yeah, your mind goes with you wherever you go. So, you, you know, you traveled here from, from the far east. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> you came from hell. <laughs> Farther than the far east from hell. Yeah. And then, and then the same, you know. I'm resurrecting. Exactly. The relationships show up, and then uh, you talked about selling your house, and 
letting go of your job, but but Ken was a woodworker, and there is wood all over. I mean, this is like, <laughs> it's like you, it's all spirit. The spirit's like here, it's like giving you those old symbols, and it's like saying, let everything be made new. Let everything be made new. Just have a fresh moment, a fresh start with everything. There's a lightness to that. That's what we want. We don't want to be tied down to our past. And Finally feeling like a new creation. Yeah, that's yeah. great. I, I can see it on your face. Right <laughs> you're just, you're just smiling just more than ever. A little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> that's great. That's fantastic. <laughs> now you got me interested in the wedding cake. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta see it before it's all carved up. <laughs> see what Ken was talking about there. <laughs> it was from our usual, very excellent yes. supplier. Supplier. Our usual supplier. The, the free city. store food bank. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've got no pride. <laughs> There's a lot of people here. Probably yeah. Hi. Um, the part that affected me in the movie was where she was trying to write her vows. And she said, that, how can you write your vows when you have hate in your heart? And that was so um, big for me because I keep thinking, okay, I'm giving my life to God, whatever. I'm giving, I'm, I'm going to give it over, whatever. And then I think, oh, but is there still something there that I'm still hanging on to? I'm still blaming somebody. I'm still, and then I think, well, that's maybe my block that I can't write my vows because I can't. I have to do some more um, forgiveness or yeah, release that. So I, um, that was a big thing for me in that movie. I thought, yeah, <laughs> that could be it. You know, I just have to start looking more and more at who I'm not forgiving and who I choose to keep hanging on to, and who, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm so pleased to be with you guys for this day. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I got to say. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think it's so important because um, we talked about how, like Lovey talked about pushing the the hatred down. Like it's frightening. Because, and I know so many people who tell me that, like, well, I don't like repression and I don't like denial, but I'm not letting that beast up because <laughs> I don't like. It's not going to be pretty if it comes up. But um, really, that's what the spirit is is telling us that that you. You can't be free of it until you're willing to look at the full extent of your own self-hatred. You will not be willing to let it go. And that's an important idea. Until you're willing to look at the full extent of your own self-hatred, you will not be willing to let it go. So, that can be a little scary, but it's also helpful to be pointed in the right direction. And uh, I don't know if you remember that, that Meg Ryan and Andy Garcia did a movie years ago, When a Man Loves a Woman. Remember that song? When a man loves a woman. It's a great movie because she seems to be the one that's got the addiction issue. And um, so it seems like she's the one in the relationship with the problem, but then when she goes through 12 steps, and she opens up to her mighty companions, and she starts to heal, and she heals, and she heals, and she heals, and she's got men friends that are part of the program that are like really helping her. Like her husband will say, you know, "Can I have a little time?" And I, I really have to call so and so. Be she's she's right in the healing process, and she realizes it's taking her in a beautiful direction. But she has to let go of all that stuff of conventions, how much time I'm spending, whether her friends are male or female, all the typical things, because she's, she's been an addict, and she wants to be free of that. And then she heals, and then suddenly the Andy Garcia character, it starts to be like where he's hanging on. All of his jealousies, it was always her problem, her problem, her problem. He was never looking inside, he was never taking responsibility for his state of mind. And that's part of why 
relationships can be f so filled with heartache. It's the codependent aspect. It's the, I want you to rescue me. You know, like John Wayne, come riding in. The, the man or the woman, come riding in and save me. And it's as if there's such a self-hatred that's still had, uh, held on to within the personality self, that it's like, well, if I could just find my other half, that'll solve it. But it doesn't work that way. In fact, there was a, a great, great uh, family therapist, you might have heard of John Bradshaw. He's an excellent family therapist. And he said, most people think that relationships are one half plus one half equals one. And he says, only problem is it's a multiplication sign there in the middle. Hmm. One half times one half equals one fourth. You feel like the one-fourth. You, you think you fall in love and you're going to go through this relationship with your other half to complete you, and you don't realize it's a big scam, it's a scheme, that you can't actually achieve it, that you will never find that one-half times one-half equals one, because it's multiplication. You'll feel like that fourth. And you'll think you're so unworthy and so deficient and then you might start singing that Eric Carmen song, Never gonna fall in love again. I don't want to start with someone new, because I'm a one-fourth now. And I don't want to be a one-eighth or one-sixteenth. Uh, so you see, if you, you know, if you really are, are down on yourself, you're, you're thinking, oh, I messed it up. I've done the one one half times one half, I'm a one fourth. Then I do the one fourth times one fourth, and I'm now a one sixteenth. And it's like, okay, I'm entering the convent and the monastery. Uh, well, I still have something left. I still have a, I still have a sliver left. So maybe I, I give it back to God. You know, here I got a one sixty fourth. Can I still come back to heaven? But actually, what John did, he always, like I told you, Jesus comes through with the positive. He said, no, it's actually, this is the equation, one times one equals one. You have to come from your own wholeness. You have to come from your own confidence in God. You have to come from your own joy. And that's what holy relationship is. When you are coming from your wholeness, your healing, your completeness, your confidence, then you've got something to give. You can take your one and multiply it with a one, and you still have one. And you've always been one. Because there's only one. Because there's only one, yes. Who, whom God has joined together in creation, man cannot put asunder. That's what the teaching is. That's the great marriage teaching. Whom God has joined, man cannot put asunder. You can't split up the one. You were never a half. You were never a fourth, never a sixteenth. It was all part of, of a belief in lack, that somehow you were separate from God. And if you have a belief that you're separate from God, what else but prayer? Here I am, Lord, joining with God, saying, Be with me. Come into my relationships. Come into my life. Come into everything. Just just come and and Show me the way, guide me, lead me. And we can't, we can't hide our light. So don't put your light under a bushel. You can't, you can't hide it. Some of us have grown up and we had a, a joy or a passion as a child to sing. You were saying nine years old, you were already singing country. In bars. In bars. But you love to sing? I love to sing, and it was the most joyful time of my life. Most joyful. No matter where it was at. And then you married the son of a preacher man. I yeah. did, but I had several marriages before him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, the woman at the well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just being honest, that would be me. Yeah. Uh, but, um, I'll fix it. Yeah, and you said that you were you were told though in that marriage that particular marriage that mm -hmm. I don't want you singing country. Yeah, he told me he took my identity away from me. You know, as a child, really, um, that's what I was meant to to do. I just picked the guitar up one day, and it was just in the, in me. 
So when I married, um, when I married the son of the preacher man, <laughs> which I did write a song about, by the way, it's called Married the Preacher Man. <laughs> Might not want to watch it on YouTube. <laughs> it's pretty funny. But <laughs> anyways, I, my thought process was, um, all right, I have been married to the, um, I've been a childhood bride to get away from my dad. You know, I uh, purposely, when they found me, you know, as a runaway, and put me back with my father, I purposely said, the first guy that takes the trash out, I'm marrying him, you know, in a trailer park. And I'm, seriously, that's what I did. And uh, it was a, one, a horrible mistake. He was a way worse abusive than my father. But I had my daughter with him. And, you know, of course that didn't last. And so then, but anyway, by the time, i make a long story short, by the time I got to the preacher man, I thought, now this has to work. Because he is so far from what I've always chosen. Right? He, it has to work. God's involved. Mm -hmm. And the problem was he, um, I call it def defrauded me. Because he didn't tell me that he was, uh, he had, he was bipolar. And he um, had grown up, you know, with, with bipolar and he should be on medication, whatever. And, and his thought process, which is correct in some aspects, was I'm healed. You know, I'm totally healed. And um, I don't need to take that. But <laughs> there's a manifestation of healing. I, you know, I mean, if it's not manifested in your abusing your wife and you're like this you know there's something wrong you know with that and so that damaged me uh, 13 years of that damaged me uh, in, in Christianity in churches you know we'd get out in the parking lot and we'd be, yeah, just lead a wonderful praise and worship service and we'd be at each other's throats in the parking lot and so that back and forth uh, deal it, it damaged me in a lot of ways. So I, when I did leave him two years ago, I ran as far from Tennessee as I could to Idaho, where my family are. And so for two years, I've been going through a uh, process of everything being stripped away from me, everything, which is um, the best thing that can happen to me. But yet, it's the most hurtful and the most. Um, humbling in the most um, emotionally stripping. You know, I've always been the strong one, no matter what I've gone through. I've always, my sisters say, oh my God, she's so strong, I've never seen anybody like her. But I felt so weak yesterday. And so weak that I was ready to check myself into a mental hospital before I contacted you. And when I contacted him, it was like, I don't even know, it was quick. He called me. And I was shocked because Christian leaders don't do that. I mean, they don't, not in the church. I could contact a Christian leader about my marriage and say, please help me. And I wouldn't get an answer for a week later. So that... It, sh it shocked me whenever he called me. It's like almost immediately within, what, 30 or 45 minutes or something. And uh, then it all worked out where I was able to come here. Yeah, it's such a clearing, too, because you have gifts that, that can be used in a far greater plan. And, and you know that inside. Yeah. And, and everything that seemed to hurt us or damage us or be hold us back or however we look at it we have an opportunity to, to kind of empty our heart out empty ourselves out and say okay God I'm I want to be used by you for your glory for the, the good of everyone and then that's when things start to turn around that's yeah. when we we don't need so much to rely and lean on other people or even lean on relationships, but we can let the Spirit bring them as a blessing. And then we can always give the glory to God, so we, so we don't have that dependency that's, 
it's on the flesh. It, it goes more and more to the spirit. But it's great. You took a lot of courage just to reach out and to write that email, you know, to search online and say, okay, here I am in you Utah. You popped right up. <laughs> First one, I'm like, okay, this looks interesting. <laughs> this is because I am so, like, not a religious... That happens a lot. I have a religious bone in my body, you know what I'm saying? So I'm so, like, more open to, like, you know, I know there's more than just what I've been taught. You know, and I want to know. I'm the type of person that's like a bulldog. I want to know what it is. I want to know why I'm here. I want to accomplish what I'm supposed to accomplish. And I want to be, I want to, to, to do everything I'm supposed to do before I go. And I pray that every day. I have a lot of health issues. And I pray every day, God, <laughs> I'm not going anywhere until I've accomplished what you put me on the earth for. And it's funny that you write, you say, here I am, because I wrote a song called, Here I Am, Lord. Take me, here I am, take me wherever you want me to go. And so that that witness to my spirit, too, I really appreciate you mentioning that. The Holy Spirit always, we always have a resident singer, and at 4 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> Ricky got up and was, t Sarah took her and put one on a plane, one on a plane <laughs> swooped down over... <laughs> To pick the next one up and brought her out here. You even so. have the same same guitar case. I'm like, I just put this on a plane. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Sarah's, Sarah's like such a bad. You were like the Monica, the yeah. the Irish angel, going, okay, Lord, what have we got? Oh, drop one singer off, and say, oh, they got the same guitar case. That's, that's, a, that's a nice little touch there. But you know, it starts from a higher perspective. You see how wonderful it is. Because it's beautiful. Ricky actually had been out here and had been helped preparing for this. And then she was getting, she, it was time for her to go back to, to our chemist place because she's going touring for anywhere between a month and two months. And she had to gear her mind up and get prepared for that tour and everything. And so it was like one out and one in. This <laughs> music, we love music. We love live music. We love music from the heart. It's it soothes our soul, you know. It's 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 a big part. And and I do see it that that's how it's like God just providing for all of us. It's a blessing for all of us. It's a blessing. You could feel the blessing right away, but that's how it works. We just have to trust it. We have to trust that without trying to control it or or figure it out, it's just going to happen to us if if that's a prayer of our heart. It's beautiful. I do want to say this, the song. Um, it, it Actually, I was taught something today about selfishness. Because the song that I wrote, I thought that was about me when I wrote it. I thought, oh, this is about my forever love, you know, all this kind of stuff. That woman, mm -hmm. you know, once, even after she's been married many times. <laughs> And hasn't found it. Yeah. <laughs> Just being honest, right? So when I wrote it, I thought, "Oh, this is so beautiful, beautiful." Two we two weeks ago, and it has to be about me, <laughs> moi, you know. Mm -hmm. And so then when I when you guys were doing your vows, I was like crying, and I thought, "How can I sing this song?" Lord told me. <laughs> You were selfish. This song was not for you or them. <laughs> so you need to put aside your selfishness. <laughs> Sing the song for who you wrote it for. And I'm like, wow, you know, that is just how God works. Yeah, I just, I just had this occurrence when um, you, were, <clears throat> you were sharing how on the internet and David popped up first. And it's been for a while now, part of our task was, you know, engine searching, mm. doing this, doing this. I'm like, are we, like, promoting something? Are we trying to sell something? It like, feels like a company, a business. And I've joined with um, a couple of people, and they're doing this nonstop, and they're just <laughs> losing it. And I'm like, I don't know what anything's for. Like, we really don't. And, yeah, you showing up, this is just a witness. Like, there's a call for help, and it's just spirits coming in so fast. Yeah, there's no delay. And you, yeah, you just go, wow, I don't know what anything is for. I think it's sitting on a computer transcribing something, or mm -hmm. we don't know, like the calling is out there so strong now. But yeah, and it's just, boom, coming in, so the prayers are answered. The internet's yeah. a powerful tool. You, you know, so you, quick. Exactly. It was so quick. Yeah. yeah, it's being used by spirit. <laughs> it's like Ricky, she actually 
when we just got this monastery going, I guess it's been going like seven years now, the center, and um, it was a, it was probably going a couple, two or three years, and then um, we got this email from Ricky, and she's like, yeah, I don't know what's going on, I'm in Nashville, and I've written all these songs, and but my, my, my career's not taken off, and and I don't know what it's for, and this and this and this, and she's a strong woman too. Uh, she's very powerful voice, very strong, but she started to be like more taken down to her knees, like like she's going to be a rock star and hit all these things. Her sister's like, did you get that big break yet? Oh, I'm with you when you get that big break. But she found herself uh, in a motel room with her guitar and her dog. <laughs> and this Course in Miracles book, and that's it. And she just was like, okay, is this, where is this going to go? Then she told me, she wrote, I always used to get, at least I could get a restaurant gig. I could get always fall back. If I couldn't get a singing gig, I could always get a waitressing gig. And then she started writing like, what is up? I seem like I'm just in this motel room, and I'm. it's like a real prayerful time, but it's like, Things are being taken away, like the doors are all closed, there's nothing, not even a waitressing gig. She says, there's something up, something's happening, something's going on. And then some months went by and she wrote another email, and then I called her and I said, I think you should come. And so she said, okay, I'm in Nashville, I've got to sell some guitars and, and I've got to find what to do with my dog, and then I'm, I'm going to visit my family because they're in Florida and Louisiana and so forth, and I'm coming. She got a little CRV, Christ Remembrance Vehicle, <laughs> and she hopped in and she sold her guitars and she came out in her little CRV and she came here, and then it was it was tough because she had done an album, she actually had a CD, but then she, I said, great, I'd, I'd love it. To send me something, oh my, you got a great voice, well, send me your CD. So she sent me the CD, and then the next time I talked to her, she said, before you listen to it, I said, well, I already have. She said, oh God, because there's one song I don't want you to hear, because there's some lyrics that I just, I just don't want them to go in your ears. <laughs> and I said, oh, you mean that song where you say it? saying, I want to walk through walls and still get laid? She goes, I, I gave her the exact lyric that she didn't want me to hear on the phone. She's like, oh my God, that's the thing I didn't want you to hear and you're giving it right back to me. So, but anyway, she came out and, and that began like unloosening of emptying out, letting go of pride and, and she kept thinking, I want to sing, sing for the Lord, and write. she's a songwriter, write songs, but there was so much purification that had to happen. I don't know, what was it, like three, three years? Yeah. It's about three years of purification, and then I think she was out here at the monastery where she started to put down these lyrics, and, and or make a song from something that uh, Suzanne had written, mm. and it started her, kind of ignited her of being used in a very, very direct way by God. Now she travels around and she sings and she witnesses and she is transparent and shares her stories and sings her songs and it's all beautiful. And and so it's beautiful that how it works. And it is interesting because with all the different things we're doing with SEO and this and this and then for, for me to pop right up there in that answer that the Spirit it has to use the symbols so people can find their what's in their heart. Portia's got so many symbols going on, movies and music, she's, she's the queen of, of symbols. <laughs> she's, she's a Trekkie. Yeah, she's a Trekkie, she's, pip, she's rolling them in. Send them in as fast as they'll come. <laughs> I can't even write them all down. Actually, the first first day here, I thought, okay, I'm going to do what Nicholas said. You should start writing them down. Oh. <laughs> so I go to bed, and I think I got seven down from the first day and thought, oh, this is going to be way too burdensome. 
and really there's been day things day after day. Um, the movie The Peaceful Warrior. I woke up at, the spirit woke me up at 5.15 a.m. You know, 6 o'clock is early enough, but 5.15. And word of the day is trash. I'm like, are you kidding? Look up the word trash. The theme for today is trash. And I thought, oh, I better do that bathroom. That's my duty. <laughs> oh, I better take my garbage out. And then when we're watching The Way of the Peaceful Warrior, take out the trash. You know, I had a hint of thought that it might be something like that, but I just wasn't watching for it, and boom. So I was glued to the movie. You know, Trash in your there. mind, right? That, yeah. was, that was boom. Yeah. It was a whole different connotation than you thought. Yeah. yeah. That was beautiful. It was, I've had lots of those here. It's so fun. <laughs> I just want to say something uh, uh, following on what Portia said. I was in uh, the casita in the Casa de Malagros with a group, and I had, was just telling them, or I guess we had just seen the movie there, and uh, that same line uh, came, well, Tia, we got to take the trash out of our minds. That's the whole thing, remove the obstacles to God's presence. And then we hear this screech of brakes right outside the, the building. And the guys call it basura, which is uh, trash in Spanish. <laughs> Perfect timing. I just tried to listen. Coming at you every angle. When you're ready, it's coming at you. To a theater near you, your mind. <laughs> That's the closest theater. <laughs> Yeah, it was today was very profound for me, Michael. I don't know why, but it started at three thirty in the morning and took Ricky and you know, there's been this real experience lately of any idea of knowing anyone or friendships or anything, even though there's so much love here. And all for the last six months or so it's been a real releasing of persons and the idea of persons. And to Ricky and I had just a really joyful trip in. It was very high and in purpose, and we were just very joined in our function. We realized that if, if for one split second we thought there were two people who loved each other in the car, we could end up in Reno by accident. Because, <laughs> you know, the energy of that was that excitement energy, which is not the same as the still deep, you know. And we both were having that same healing all summer, so we were very willing to stay and get her on the right lift off. But to come and pick you up, because <laughs> remember I've been driving at Stark and I've been looking front on, hearing a voice beside me, a, Nash a Nashville style voice like yours, the same tempo as yours, the same case, the exact same thing. And I had this really strange feeling after I put Ricky on the curb and said goodbye. I was like, That's a I don't understand that. Like, it just feels... W I remember I said something like, say hello to the boys. It was something like bizarre, like per like a person line. And I'm like, that's strange. And I got in the car and, and then and I've had this experience with with you to this summer too, where I had to say, oh, gosh, you know, I can't have a thought of how much I love you as a friend anymore. I can't afford it. Because this experience that's coming in. And she asked me to take the photos today. And everyone in this community knows that I'm hardly at any quotas because I've taken most of them. So, but I couldn't do it anymore. I said, I really just want to sit and watch you get married. I really just want to sit. We just watched Walter Mithy. And uh, he didn't take the picture of the snow leopard when they trekked up to the top of somewhere in Afghanistan and they sat there. And so... This morning when I turned to you and I just said, I just, I just don't want to watch the snow leopard. <laughs> and said, that's okay. <laughs> and it was so, it was just so great because this willingness to release each other, even from the helpfulness or something. And, and again with my mighty companion here, like I surrendered my Monica being any kind of a wedding planner, even though my heart leaps at those thoughts, 
I couldn't do anything for you. We had this talk. It was all given for you to do the things that I generally would think I would love to do. And it was my greatest pleasure to watch myself, myself do everything with the exact love. Just watch myself do everything. And I, I felt like I got to have the lesson of this touched by an angel sequence today already by setting back and then joyfully the camera arrived in my hand anyway and photos appeared but I didn't I still had my leopard moment so I don't know it's just everything was given and I just that's all I want I just want to surrender this idea of my myself more and more and I'm just really grateful for all the opportunities and the reflections and yeah that's all <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. This was the snow leopard day for all of us. Really beholding. <laughs>